Hi, my name is William Soreva. I am doing a presentation here, uh, sir, which is a survey on wireless power transfer and ways for possible integration with a uh, wireless uh, communication network. Uh, we'll start with the introduction here. Um, basically, uh, uh, if you notice in the last 10 to 20 years, we have had a rise in the world of wireless communication and that's because, you know, all these smart devices that we have around and you know just just keep growing and affecting our life in many wonderful ways and i don't think that uh we can you know ever you know just stop using them uh they definitely integrated into our lives and i think smartphones in these days they could see your they could easily be your fifth limb really um that's how much integration that is in the world uh, with uh, technology these days and it just keeps on growing. And I think one thing that we are having an issue with is, you know, wires. It doesn't matter what it is, even if it is one of those, you know, um, small uh, charge pads that we see in the market today, um, they still need our wires to charge. And, you know, it, it's, it doesn't matter, you know, you still need a wire. and I think uh, there is room to grow there and to a point that we're not going to need it anymore. And, you know, let's talk a little bit, you know, about the history. And then we're going to go over, you know, possible applications that might, you know, aid in the process of being wire free. So uh, in the early days, uh, it dates back to the, you know, late 1800s. Um, started with hiring Hertz and uh, Nikola Tesla. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about hiring Hertz first. Uh, he pretty much set up the framework for most of the stuff that is in the market today. Um, he demonstrate he was able to demonstrate, uh, you know, electromagnetic propagation uh, in open space. And it was a complete system. Uh, you also had, you know, a receiver that, that was able to capture the, you know, electric current and, you know, you actually use it, you know, uh, as you can see here in the system, uh, first you have the induction coil, uh, that produce the high, you know, that produce high voltage that generate that then, you know, proceeded to generate a spark, uh, which produce an electromagnetic, uh, waves, these electromagnetic waves, then, you know, created an electric current, uh, with a resonator. Uh, which in turn also generated a spark, so you can see that it's a full, you know, complete system. Um, Nikola Tesla had a totally different take on this, and honestly, his take was very sci-fi-ish, in my opinion. Um, he, his idea was to use alternating current uh, that went up and down a mast, setting up these oscillations, you know, of power around the globe and he would have like this the idea that he would have like these antennas at optimum points that were you know get this power and then you know basically generate the electricity for the home and it's pretty much his theory so uh, based on this theory in 1899 uh, he attempted in Colorado Springs with the help of the local power company um, he built like this enormous tower as you can see on your far left of the presentation, um, this big, you know, sci-fi looking, you know, uh, sparkle. <laughs> uh, so anyways, he built this enormous coil uh, with a mast, right? That rose over 200 feet and had this three feet uh, copper ball on top. And he was able to feed over like 300 kilowatts uh, of low frequency power and when the output of the coil uh, got to the mast it produced a radio frequency of 1 million uh, volts um, although it looks something like a sci-fi movie thing that you know that you might see um, there were no proof uh, that any distant device was able to collect and 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 that even the the energy radiated into empty space so i mean yes it looked really cool but there was no real proof so he decided to attempt the 
process again, but this time he was going to build something even more ambitious and bigger. Unfortunately, he, you know, ran out of funds and he was able to, you know, he, he needed to halt the project. And unfortunately, another set of bad news is that the U.S. government tore the whole thing apart um, during World War I because they thought it just looked very conspicuous. So there was a big break from there to, you know, the further development. And it wasn't until uh, NASA was born in 1958 that we see um, wireless power transfer also getting kicked into gear. Uh, although it was a research, you know, that was uh, around solar power satellites, um, they ended up having to research microwaves because the second leg of this uh, power transmission via satellite uh, needed uh, to be beamed to Earth. So it was either laser or microwave. So the microwave concept was successfully demonstrated in 1974 and 1975. And the demonstration consisted of a power beam transfer for over, uh, over microwave beam for over a, mi a mile with a DC output of 30 kilowatts and which was twice greater than what they were able to do in the lab. Now that's very impressive. So this gave confidence to both NASA and the aerospace community at the time. Um, it, there was other, you know, developments there, you know, some unexpected findings uh, because uh, w one of them was the active phase array transmitter. Uh, technology would, it was something that was found out because of this, you know, this this research. And even though in 1980 the solar power satellites kind of died out, uh, NASA kept, uh, you know, researching uh, microwave powered aircraft for surveillance and communication. And you know, ended up that other research centers got into it as well. And it's pretty much uh, w where you know we are today. You know, it's the type of research we've been doing. Um, so we're going to talk about, uh, one of the implementations, uh, that I mentioned earlier, uh, that are possible with some of the technology we have today. Well, this one is, uh, simultaneous wireless information and power transfer. Uh, basically it's a merge of wireless power transmission and wireless power information into the same, uh, outlet. And uh, technology may prove to be useful inside of a house, really, because we got to use a uh, ultra narrow band of 2.4 and 2.5 gigahertz. So it'll be perfect for a home router. Um, although the further research needs to be done in this area, uh, the following architecture uh, has proven that it's possible to be accomplished. Uh, in the figure you see uh, DC power being sent to the oscillator after it undergoes modulation, the microwaves and transmitter on a 2.4 to 2.5 uh, narrowband uh, to the receiving device. Uh, this in turn splits the to the demodulation circuit and the rectifier circuit. Now, even though this is just for the wireless power transmission, we can easily see how we could integrate uh, so that we can have a second antenna maybe there that would also transfer uh, the information to the other end at the same time. Now, uh, for the modulation, we use the MARI uh, phase uh, position key, uh, shift key. This is a uh, sign-like modulation. We don't use the sign modulation because the bandwidth is zero, so we have to use this one because it is a little bit higher. Uh, and is able to work well with the ultra narrow band. Ultra narrow band. Uh, for the demodulation, uh, receiver has uh, the receive carrier that uses a one by four uh, wavelength microstrip open stop. So now we're going to talk about something really cool, which is wireless integrate wireless power transfer integration with a cellular network. Now, it's like you woke up one day and you forgot to charge your cell phone and you rush out of the house and you're on the road and you got to drive, you know, an hour to work and all of a sudden you're like, oh my God, I forgot to charge my cell phone. Today, you'll freak out because 
to many, like I said earlier in the presentation, uh, to many people is like a fifth limb. So, you know, what do you do? If we lived in the world that this was done already, you wouldn't care because your cell phone would be constantly be charging. So, wouldn't it be cool if we were able to make that happen in our lifetime, which I think you will. I don't think we're that far. Um, so this is a proposed diagram, uh, a hybrid diagram that shows, you know, this antenna links, you know, and the, an integration with uh, this power beacons that would be uh, part of the, the cell phone network, essentially. Uh, basically, uh, although we have some of the challenges with, with the line of sight, uh, links between the PBs um, to the receiving uh, devices and you know to allow the free space of power transfer uh, is easily compensated by some of the advances in uh, technology you know one is we don't need such a higher frequency because you know the devices these days they're getting more and more efficient and we can also use the actual infrastructure that already exists, such as, you know, light poles and, and, and such. So we can have these power beacons. They don't need to be exactly where the, the, the tower is for the, for the cell phone network transmission. That can be elsewhere, even though they are linked to the cell phone company, they don't need to necessarily be there. And you know, I think this will be a great, you know, um, accomplish if we're able to integrate something like that into a cell phone network. So uh, I really hope that this served to enlighten you a little bit on the wireless power transfer world. I think that is a lot that can be done, you know, stuff that began with Hertz and Tesla now today we have so many things that can be done with wireless power. And, you know, I think it's it's a really cool idea and I like where it's heading. Uh, that's pretty much it.